Beneath the sparkling surface of the ocean off the coast of Florida lies a ticking time bomb, a dangerous remnant from the 1970s that has thrown the marine world into chaos. Back then, it was believed that millions of old car tires could create an artificial reef that would boost marine life. But what started as a groundbreaking idea has turned into an ecological disaster. The tires, once securely anchored, now drift uncontrollably through the sea, smashing coral reefs and threatening the delicate balance of the marine ecosystem. How did a seemingly brilliant project become such a destructive problem? The origins of the artificial reef date back to the 1970s, a time when environmental awareness and the rise of innovative conservation projects were on the rise. There was a growing global concern about the mounting piles of waste and environmental pollution. One major issue was the accumulation of old tires in landfills, which posed a significant burden. This led to the idea of killing two birds with one stone, addressing the problem of overflowing landfills while also promoting marine life. The concept was to use old tires as the foundation for an artificial reef, creating new habitats for fish and other marine creatures. Today, such an idea would be completely unthinkable. Who would throw old rubber into the sea, hoping it would somehow benefit the environment? But back then, the understanding of sustainability was entirely different. Experts hoped that this initiative would not only boost biodiversity off the coast of Florida, but also support local fishing and tourism industries. A local nonprofit organization eventually spearheaded the project after it received approval from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, lending the endeavor additional credibility and outside support. Over two million tires were collected, some donated by Goodyear, a tire manufacturer, and others sourced from local landfills. These tires were loaded onto boats and ships and dumped into the sea about a mile off the coast of Fort Lauderdale. To officially kick off the project, a gold-painted tire was ceremoniously lowered into the water. The tires were held together by nylon ropes and steel clips to keep them compact and anchored to the ocean floor. No one could have foreseen that this would prove to be a fatal mistake. The public was thrilled. The new reef was celebrated nationwide as an innovative contribution to environmental protection and a boon to marine life. Official press releases touted the supposed benefits of using tires as reef materials material and proclaimed the project's success. Everything seemed perfect, but it wasn't long before the much lauded project began to show its flaws. Tires, as it turns out, are much too lightweight compared to other materials used for artificial reefs, such as concrete. Moreover, the nylon ropes and steel clips meant to hold the tires together proved inadequate for the changing and unpredictable conditions at sea. In no time, storms and strong tides demonstrated their immense power, causing the first bundles of tires to break loose and scatter across the ocean floor. The disaster was unstoppable. Soon the tires spread over a vast area, about the size of 31 football fields. Some of the tires even washed up on beaches, highlighting for some people the scale of this uncontrollable spread. The impact of the reef on marine life was immense. Many tires were pushed against nearby natural coral reefs, damaging their delicate structures and blocking the growth of the coral. The tires rolled across the ocean floor uncontrollably, destroying natural vegetation and habitats for fish and other marine inhabitants. The project itself became a dead reef. It became clear that the smooth surface of the rubber provided no suitable area for coral growth or the settlement of marine organisms, leaving it devoid of life. To make matters worse, concerns arose that the tires might be releasing toxins, such as heavy metals and other chemicals, into the water, further endangering marine life. The lightness of the tires was identified by scientists as the main reason for the project's failure, as they could easily be moved by currents. Intended to create new life, this initiative instead became a destroyer of existing habitats. As the reef's downfall became more apparent, scientists and environmentalists increasingly voiced their concerns, criticizing the original idea for its far-reaching negative consequences. Even those involved in the project, like Ray McAllister, who initially supported it, later admitted that it was a mistake and that the risks had been underestimated. The natural balance of marine life was permanently disrupted by the tires drifting in the ocean. Even today, decades after the project's failure, the problem of the widespread tire dispersal and the resulting damage remains unresolved. The tire reef off the coast of Florida wasn't the only one that went disastrously wrong. In Virginia, USA, a similar project failed when a hurricane dislodged the tires, 
which then washed up on the beaches of North Carolina. In New Jersey, the concept of an artificial reef also failed to take hold. But how do you deal with the consequences of such a massive incident? The first cleanup efforts began in the early 2000s. In 2001, Dr. Sherman from Nova Southeastern University received a $30,000 grant from NOAA to begin removing the tires. During this effort, 1,600 tires were removed, with costs amounting to $17 per tire. In 2007, amidst various attempts to remove the tires, the U.S. military was also brought in to assist. The tire recovery efforts were used as a training opportunity, where military divers practiced for real-life rescue missions by working on the tires. Up to 1,000 tires could be retrieved per day. Over the years, estimates suggest that between 439,000 and 677,000 tires were removed, though exact numbers are hard to verify. However, this supposed solution to the problem came at a significant cost. The military alone budgeted $2 million for the retrieval. Governor Charlie Crist allocated $2 million in state funds to support the cleanup, with additional state resources needed to cover the total cost of $3.4 million. Even to Today, efforts to remove the remaining tires from the ocean continue. The Four Ocean Initiative has made it a central mission to pull the remaining tires out of the water. This project is funded by selling jewelry made from the recovered tires. Despite significant progress, around 500,000 tires still remain on the ocean floor. Four Ocean reported that by 2022, approximately 150,000 tires had been removed, but the work remains time-consuming and expensive. The retrieval of these tires is no easy task. They are often embedded in sand, making extraction difficult, and the changing ocean conditions, including strong currents and poor visibility, present further challenges. The cost per tire continues to rise, as the more easily accessible tires have already been removed, and the remaining ones are harder to reach. The complete removal of the tires is expected to take several more years, with plans to finish the work by 2028. However, whether this will be successful remains uncertain. To dispose of the recovered tires sustained they are shredded and repurposed for road construction projects. Some tires are also used as fuel in specialized facilities to generate energy. Tires that cannot be recycled are safely disposed of to prevent further environmental damage. The coral reefs affected by this tragic event will take decades to recover, even after most of the tires have been removed. The tires not only destroyed the natural reef, but also significantly reduced the biodiversity in the affected region. The disruption of food chains has long-term impacts on the entire marine environment. The Osborne Reef shows that even the best intentions can have catastrophic consequences if all possible risks are not considered. It is essential that future projects are grounded in solid scientific research and undergo comprehensive testing to ensure that something like this never happens again. How can we ensure that we learn from past mistakes and design future projects to genuinely protect and not harm the environment? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss anything in the future.